So medical costs are the tapeworm of American economic competitiveness. In 2012, you were quoted as saying, I think the health care problem in, uh, is the number one problem of America and of American business. We have not dealt with that yet. Do you believe that the current administration's plan to repeal and replace ACA will ultimately benefit the economy and Berkshire or not? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll answer. I'll give you two, two answers here. The first one being that if you go back to 1960 or thereabouts, <clears throat> corporate taxes were about 4 percent of GDP. I mean, they bounced around some. And now they're about 2 percent of GDP. And at that time, health care was 5% of GDP, and now it's about 17% of GDP. So when American business talks about taxes strangling our competitiveness or that sort of thing, they're talking about something that as a percentage of GDP has gone down from 4 to 2, while medi medical costs, which are borne to a great extent by business, have gone from 5 to 17%. So medical costs are the tapeworm of economic, American economic competitiveness. I mean, if you're really talking about it. And uh, that, and, and business knows that. They don't feel they can do much about it. But uh, it is not, the tax system is not crippling Berkshire's competitiveness around the world or anything of the sort. Our, our health costs have gone up incredibly and will go up a lot more. And if you look at the rest of the world, there were a half a dozen countries that were around our 5 percent, if you go back to the earlier years, and while we're at 17 now, they're at 10 or 11. So they have gained a 5 or 6 point advantage, the world, and even in these countries with fairly high medical costs. And that's with socialized medicine. Yeah. So it's, it, 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 it's a huge, it's a, whatever I said then goes and, and is accentuated now. Uh, and that isn't a problem. I mean, that is a problem the society is, is having trouble with and is going to have more trouble with. And uh, regardless of which party's in power or anything of the sort, it, 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 it almost transcends that. Uh, uh, in terms of the new act that uh, was passed a couple of days ago versus the Obama Administration Act. Uh, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, all I can tell you is the net effect of that act on one person is that my taxes, my federal income taxes would have gone down, down 17 percent last year if the act, if what was proposed went into effect. So it is a huge tax cut for guys like me. And you, you'll have to figure out the effects of the rest of the act. But the one thing I can tell you is if it goes through the way the House uh, put in, I mean, it, anybody with $250,000 a year of adjusted gross income and a lot of investment income uh, is going to have a huge tax cut. And when you, there's a tax cut, either the deficit goes up or they get the taxes from somebody else. So as it stands now, uh, it is, that is the one predictable effect if it should pass, is it? Uh, and it, the Senate will do something different and go to a conference and who knows what happens. But that is, that is in, the, in the law that was passed a couple of days ago. Charlie? Well, I certainly agree with you about the medical care. What I don't like about the medical care is that a, a, a lot of it, we're getting too much medicine. There's too much chemotherapy on people that are all but dead. And all kinds of crazy things go on in Medicare. And, and in the other parts of the health system. And there's so many vested interests that it's very hard to change. But, but I don't think any rational person looking objectively from the outside of the American system of, of medical care. Uh, we all love all the new life-saving stuff and the new chemotherapies and the new drugs and all that. But my God, this system is crazy. And the cost is just going wild. And it does put our manufacturers at a big disadvantage with other people where the government is paying the medical costs. And so 
I agree with Warren totally. If you had to bet 10 years from now, we'll be at higher or lower than 17% of GDP. Well, if present trends continue, it'll get more and more. There are huge vested interests in having this thing continue the way it is. And, uh, and they're very vocal and active, and the rest of us are indifferent. So naturally, we get a terrible result. And, and I would say that on this issue, both parties hate each other so much that neither one of them can think rationally. And I don't think that helps either. It's it, it, it is kind of interesting that, you know, with the federal government spends or raises, we'll say, three and a half trillion or something like that. And I mean, the, the degree of concern everybody has about that, although that's stayed fairly steady in the 18 percent or so of GDP plus or minus a couple of points. But three trillion plus is spent on health care and and everybody wants the best and it's perfectly understandable. But it's a very, very it's, it's a big number compared to the whole federal budget. I mean, there's some overlap and all of that, but it, it it's if you talk about world competitiveness of American industry, it's the biggest single variable where we keep getting more and more out of whack with the rest of the world. And uh, it's very it's very tough for political parties to attack it. Yet it's, you know, it basically it's a political subject. But a lot of it is deeply immoral. If you have a group of hospital people and doctors that are sort of feasting like a bunch of jackals on the carcass of some dying person. It's not a pretty sight. Tell them about that group out in California that... Oh, yes. Perfect, this is, it, this is Redding. This is one of my favorite stories. <laughs> there are a bunch of very ambitious cardiologists and heart surgeons in Redding. And they got the thought that really... What a heart was was a widow maker. So everybody, every patient that came in, they said, you've got a widow maker in your chest and we know how to fix it. And so they recommended heart surgery for everybody. And of course, they developed a huge volume of heart surgery and they got very wonderful results because nobody comes through heart surgery better than the man who doesn't need it at all. And, <laughs> and, and they made so much money that the hospital chain, which was tenant, brought all its other hospitals. Why can't you be more like Reading? And, this is a true story. And it went on and on and on. And finally, there was some beloved Catholic priest. And they said, you've got a widow maker in your chest. And he didn't believe them. And, and he, he blew the whistle. He was a priest. You can see why he didn't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> and at any rate, he, yeah. well, well, when you've got a routine, you just keep using it. You know, the heart is a widow maker. It's a widow maker. Later, I met one of the doctors who threw these people out of the medical profession. And I said to him, in the end, did they think they were doing anything wrong? He said, no, Charlie. They thought that what they were doing was good for people. That is why it's so hard to fix these things. The self, the delusion that comes into people as they make money and get more successful by doing God awful things should never be underestimated. And it, there's a lot of... A lot of that goes on, and it, and it, you get onto such gross craziness. And you think Little Wells Fargo looks like innocence, you know, had a little trouble with this incentive system, but when the heart surgery rate was 20 times normal or something, you'd think you'd notice if you're running a hospital. And but they they did notice they wanted the other hospitals to more be more like it. They had a terrific success ratio.